now let's start with the most fundamental blocks of functional programming and that is recursion now don't worry if you have never worked with recursion or if you find recursion very confusing i will show you recursion step by step line by line i will also include a lot of diagrams and small animations to help you understand how recursion works but for now let us get started so this is the mixed project that we created in the last video now i don't need all of this code let me just take it out and let me just save it now let's write a very simple recursive program to print the number of digits so suppose you have a function called as up to and if you pass 3 to it then we should print 0 to 3 so it's a very simple program but we will implement the program recursively so inside the lib directory i want you to create a new folder by the name of recursion and inside this folder let us create a file and let us call it as print digits dot ex now this time please remember that the extension is dot ex because we want to compile this file and if you go to test here we can see that we have dot exs so these are script files and they are not meant for your production code now let me get back to the print digits and let me collapse my sidebar now remember that all of the code inside elixir stays inside its modules so the first thing is we need to define a module for this file so let's create a module by typing def module and this is the name recursion dot print digits but the naming convention goes like this first we normally include the name of our project so we have named our project as tutorials and let me open up my sidebar so inside our project of tutorials we have created a folder called as recursion and inside that recursion we have created a file called as print digits now remember that this is just a community convention and it is not required you can name this module anything that you want now with that in mind let me collapse my sidebar now inside of this module let us create a function called as up to so we can define a function by using the keyword of def and then we can say up to now this function is going to accept one parameter and that would be for our numbers and then we can start with the do and end blocks now suppose the number is 3 then we simply want to print out something like this so we take the input as 3 and then we want to print digits from 0 to 3 so this is what we want to print but we need to do this thing recursively you must be thinking maybe we can just create a for loop so we can create a for loop for i is equal to 0 then we can say i less than and equal to your number and then i plus plus and then we can simply print out i so if you're thinking we can do something like this then the answer is no because all of the data types inside elixir are constants they are immutable and what's happening inside the for loop is for each iteration we are changing the value of i which is right over here so we can't use this kind of for loops inside elixir then what can we use so the answer is by using recursion so let me take out the comments first let me write the code and then i will explain what's happening now let's think of a base case suppose the number itself is zero then at that time we don't have to do anything so at that time we simply have to return back zero so we just write zero over here now remember that the last line inside your function automatically returns so this is your automatic return statement and we don't have to use the keyword of return for the last line now remember that elixir is a functional programming language so essentially we have to return some kind of a value for each function and in case the function is creating some kind of a side effect at that time by default an atom of ok is returned but for now let us continue with this program and let me write the next base case so what we can do in elixir is we can actually create multiple copies of the same function this is also called as function overloading and we can do this because elixir supports pattern matching so what we did right over here is we created a function called as up to and we are pattern matching on zero so in case if the number is zero then we simply want to return zero and that's it now we can create one more copy of the same function so we can say define up to this again accepts a parameter called as numbers and let's see what we can do this time so this time what we want to do is we simply want to print out so we can print out by using io.puts 
so let us print out the number but what we want to do is for each iteration we want to reduce the number by one so for example if the number was three then after we print out three for the next iteration your number should become two then your number should become one and then your number should become zero and when your number becomes zero at that time we go to this line number three where we simply return zero back so the next question is how can we reduce the value of number by one each time the answer is by using a recursive call to the same function so for each iteration we can call ourselves back but each time what we can do is we can say numbers minus of one so what we are doing is suppose this number is three so the next time when we call the same function we are passing three minus one that means we are passing two now don't worry if you find this logic a little bit confusing we will see how to trace this function and how we can create recursive trees so i will use a small diagram and small animation for it but first let us run this file and let us see if it is working or not so let me save the file and let me open up my terminal now till now we have been working with iex but this time we have created a project by using our mix tool but fortunately we can use iex along with our mix project as well so here we can say that hey iex i want you to start mix so we just use the flag of hyphen and s followed by the mix command so what happens in the background is iex simply compiles your project and all of the modules are available to you inside our iex so let me clear up everything and let us call this function of up to but remember that this function stays in this module so what we can do is we can say from the module of tutorials i want you to go to the module of recursion from recursion i want you to go to the module of print digits and from here i want to use the function of up to and let us pass three right over here and let us see the output we are getting so here it is we are getting the output of three two and one so this zero is not printing if you want we can print zero right over here at line number four so if you want we can replace this line by again io dot puts and zero but i think there is no point in printing zero so we can take this one out or else we can also say that whenever we get a zero we simply want to stop and we can return back an atom called as okay which symbolizes that our operation was successful now let me save the file now since we have saved the file we also need to recompile our project now here we have two choices either we can recompile the entire project or we can recompile just the model that we have changed but each time typing such a huge model name is a big pain in the ass so what we can do is we can create a small alias so we can say that i want to create an alias for tutorials dot recursion dot print digits let me clear up the screen and now we can say that i simply want to recompile my model of print digits and here it is we have recompiled that module now let me clear it up one more time and this time again we can use the model of print digits and we can invoke the function of up to now again if you want you can use the parentheses or you can leave them out so let me just pass three right over here and this time we get the output of three two one and okay so let us go back to our code editor and let us see what's happening so what's happening right over here is this is also called as your base case so let me put up comment right over here so this you can call this is your base case so that means that in case if we get an input which is zero at that moment we simply want to return some kind of a value and we want to exit from our recursive function now since this function returns a single value we can use a much shorter syntax so let me take out end let me take out the return statement and after the function definition i have to put a comma after do i have to put a colon and let me take out the okay from here and let me paste it right over here and that's it so this is also a valid function definition so normally whenever we return a single value that time we use a single line definition now instead of returning okay let me go back to returning zero so what's happening is we have a base case whenever we are getting the input of zero at that time we are simply returning zero but we are not printing anything and in all other cases we are first printing that number and then we have a recursive call 
Now let's see how we can trace this function. So let me open up my browser. And uh, so this is our function for print digits. So this print up to zero and do zero. This is our base case. And this is our recursive function. So this line number four is a place where actual printing is taking place. And on line number five, we have a recursive call to the same function. Now let's see how we can trace this function. Just imagine that the first argument we are passing to this function is three. So for each iteration, what's going to happen? So Elixir is going to compare from top to the bottom. Is three and zero equal? No, they are not. So Elixir will jump to this function definition. So let's see what's going to happen for this function definition. The first thing is we are simply telling Elixir to print out the value of number. So that's what is going to happen. So the first call is to print and we get three back. Now what happens next? So next is a recursive call to the same function, but with the value of number minus one. So let's see what's going to happen. So next is we are calling the same function back but the value becomes two. Now is two equal to zero? No, it's not equal to zero. So again, Elixir will jump to this function definition. And again, what happens? The first line is we simply want to print out the number. So we get the output of two. And what happens on the next line? We are calling ourselves back, but this time again, number minus one. So the next call becomes up to and your argument becomes one. Again, the same thing happens is one equal to zero. No, it's not. So again, Elixir will jump to this function definition. The first line is to print the value. So we get the value of one back. Now what happens over here? Again, we have to call ourselves back. So again, we call the same function, but this time the argument becomes zero. Remember one minus zero. That's why we get the argument here as zero. Now again, Elixir jumps to the first clause. Now remember, Elixir scans your code from top to the bottom and the first definition is up to with a pattern match of zero. And this time what's happening is we have a match. Since up to gets a parameter of zero, we simply want to return zero back. So what's going to happen over here? So for this function, we are simply going to return zero back and that's it. Do we have any other calls left? No. So we simply exit and that's it. We have the display of three to one in our console. So let me open up my terminal one more time. And here it is. We have the exact same output of three, two and one. So what we did right over here is we saw how we can trace our recursive program. So always remember to plot this kind of trees and this will help you to understand recursive programming in a much better way. Now let us go back to the code. And this time, let me make a very small change. Now, instead of printing the number first, what happens if I print the number afterwards? Now, let's see what happens this time. Let me open up my terminal one more time and let us recompile our module since we changed the code and let me clear it up. And then let me again call the print digits up to and let us pass three. So this time what happened? So instead of getting the output of three, two and one, we have the output of one, two and three. So what happened? We simply changed one line right over here and our entire output got reversed. So let us go back and try to trace this recursive program as well. So this was the earlier one and this is going to be the new one. So remember that we have the print statement afterwards, but first we are calling the function recursively. So let's see what's going to happen this time. So again, suppose that we are passing the argument of three. So what happens is three equal to zero? No, three is not equal to zero. Then Elixir will jump to this function definition. Now what's happening in this definition? First, we are calling ourselves. So what's going to happen? We have a recursive call and the parameter becomes three minus one. That means we have a parameter called as two. But what happens to this call at line number five? nothing that statement remains unexecuted because first we have to exhaust this function right over here so what's going to happen next time so let us see right over here so this call right over here this does not execute instead first we have to exhaust all of the parameters for this function now what's happening the parameter is 2 is 2 equal to 0 no it's not so we are going to go in this function definition. So what's happening this time? We again have a recursive call. 
So let us call ourselves back, but this time the argument becomes one. And what happens to the print statement? Nothing. That is kept on hold right over here. Now let us go back to this function right over here. Is one equal to zero? No. So we go to this function. Again, what happens? We have to call ourselves back. So let us call ourselves back. But this time the argument becomes zero. And what happens to the print statement? Again, that is kept pending. Now what's going to happen this time? We are calling ourselves, but the argument is zero. So we have a pattern match right over here. And whenever the argument is zero, we simply give back zero. And that's what happened right over here. So this call right over here, this resulted in a zero. Now the control will go back to the previous function. Now what is pending in the previous function? This print statement is pending. But what is the value of number? So the value of number is one. That's why we get the output of one first. Now again, we have exhausted this clause. The control will go back to this one. Again, what's pending? The print statement is pending. But what is the value of number? The value of number is two. That's why we get the output as two. Now again, this function is exhausted. So the control goes back to this function right over here. Again, what's pending? The print statement is pending. But what is the value of number? It's three. That's why we get the value of three back. And this is exactly happening right over here. So we get the value of one, two and three. So what's happening over here is we can say that our print statement is executing in the return stage. But in the earlier example, our print statement was executing in the ascending stage. So we have a basic difference in the execution of our recursive functions. Let us try and summarize what we have learned till now. So what we have done is we have created a simple program to print out the digits, but we have implemented the logic in a recursive function. Now the only line of difference is right over here. In the first time, the recursive call is the last line inside this function. Now remember the last line is automatically returned. We don't have to use the keyword of return. And this is creating a loop for us. Now, when do we exit? We exit when we have a base case. And what is the base case? It's right over here. Whenever we get a zero, at that time, we simply want to return zero. And this is the time when we exit from our recursive function. So we have two different function definitions. The first definition is for our base case. The second definition is for our recursive case. Now what we did in the second time is we simply changed our recursive call. So in the second case, first we have a recursive call and then we have the print statement. And what happened this time? The execution shifted from ascending stage to the return stage. So if I have to summarize further, here what's happening? The printing is done in ascending stage. And in the second case, the printing is done in the return stage. That means the work or the execution happened during return and not during ascending stage. So this kind of function is also called as tail recursion. Now remember in tail recursion, we are calling the same function back, but each time with a different argument. And on the second case, this recursion is called as head recursion because first we have the recursive call and then we have some kind of an execution left. Now you can see that we can create efficient loops in Elixir by using recursion and that too avoiding all of the side effects by mutating our values. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the lecture on recursion and I will catch you in the next one.